for the first time in over a week, we can officially say good morning to Miley because she's back. Yeah, buddy. Quick comparison. This is the old bumper that was in my car, the last color it was. Um, this is the same paint code as this, but the flakes in this one, for whatever reason, made it a lot more steel blue looking. Uh, this one came out more blue. This is the original color I was shooting for. And that's what we got the first time. But either way, the flakes are still the same. This one actually has some candy in it. And then, oh, it looks good. It's hard to tell through camera, but like, I highly enjoy this. They're both dope colors. Dope color. Dope color. They're still very similar, but obviously you can tell the difference. Oh, but man, it looks good. So I think the first order of business for today, we are doing the disc brake swap for the rear of my car. But before that happens, this car needs a bath because it's filthy. I drove through like a whole bunch of crazy rain. There's dirt all over the side. There's also some dust on it. So we're going to give her a bath real quick. And then we will commence disc brake swapping the rear. So it turns out I actually have uh, no car wash soap. So that's, that's no good for washing cars. No, it's not good. Okay, so we're going to go to the parts real quick, grab some soap, then we'll come back and then wash the car. That's the plan. Okay, let's go. So, got a new car wash today. One of the guys inside recommended it to me. Normally, I get the Meguiar's, like, gold class stuff. Um, but he said, give this a shot. It works really good. Um, and, like, one ounce of this stuff is, like, very, very, like, sudsy and strong. and But, like, not, like, abrasive. And it's also safe on polishes. So, that's a good thing for my wheels. So, I'm going to give this thing a shot and see how it works. Back at the house. Got my new soap. But, of course, it is raining. So, we'll skip the car for now. And we'll get started on the brake swap. Alright, I believe I have everything needed to swap my rear drum brakes to disc brakes. We have the dust shield, all the hardware, the spindles, I believe they're called spindles, um, the two actual rotors themselves. We have new brake pads, we have new wheel bearings, we have both calipers right and left with the brake lines. So, I believe we have everything needed to do this. Alright, the car is jacked up. I'm going to get the wheel pulled off and we'll start disassembling uh, the whole drum setup and then assembling the new disc setup. All right, the wheel is off, and the first step for me is to pull off my adapter, and then I can start taking off the center pieces to pull the hub out. Oh no. Ugh. When in doubt, grab a mallet. There it is. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. All right, we're in progress. Go ahead and pull this. Oh, maybe. There it is. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Whoops. All right, well, that's off. Now we start pulling the rest of this nonsense apart. All right, once your center cap here is off, there's going to be a small little cotter pin you want to pull out. After that, there's a few like, little like cap things. Just pull it straight off. You get to a 15th, uh, 15, 16th? A 15, 16th nut. Undo that, and once that is off, then your whole entire hub assembly should slide straight off. Wrong way. Yep, wrong way. All right. Pin is out, and then there should be a little cap right here that will come off. Cap, pull that out as well. After that's off, we should know there's a nut. Once the nut is off, now we should slide forward. I lied, my e-brake's on. Take your e-brake off, kids. Don't do what I'm doing. Somehow I always forget to pull the e-brake off and I, I do the same thing. So now, there we go, e-brake's off. Now we should slide straight off and that is now out. Once this is off, you're left with this here. Um, you wanna pull the back bearing, the inside of your bearing off and then there should be four, one, two, three, and four, 15 millimeter bolts that go through. Undo those and then we can slide the whole thing forward and off.
and we're off. All right, all that is left after you've pulled all of this off um, is to disconnect my brake line from over there and then to disconnect my e-brake from the back here. Then this whole entire thing can come off and we start putting on the new stuff. And just like that, our first side is out. So here's the old uh, drum brake here. To get off your brake line at the first fitting, it's uh, an 11 on this side and a 17 on the bigger side. And then I just pull it from there so that way when this one goes on, it's the same thing, fits right into the old one, um, the only problem I had was getting off the uh, the e-brake that goes right into here. It's kind of a pain, but basically what I did, did is get a flathead behind on this side and kind of wedge it down. There's a little gap you can see right there, on the back right here. You gotta press it through, it's kind of a pain, but just keep working on it and it should come out. So now this one's out, we can start installing the new one. All right, getting there, have the dust shield and the, um, the center spindle all put together. Next up is our bearings. I have this one here. This one goes in the front. You press the race in to there, along with your bearing, and then you have the one that goes in the back. And you also want to have, make sure you have packing grease so you can um, re-lubricate all this fun jazz. All right, so we're kind of almost there. I got most of it on, the brake calipers on, but the hub's not, oh, the, the rotor's not on yet. This would've been done forever ago, but I totally forgot you need like a race press-in tool to get the wheel bearings, or oh, the races for the wheel bearings in. Um, last time I did wheel bearings, I don't ever remember, Larry and I, we didn't use a press, I think I just used like a flathead and tapped it in. Um, I can't get it to work like that this time, so unfortunately I, I'm stuck at the moment right here. Um, I have to leave for work in a little while, I'm on the way home, I'm gonna get one of those little race pressing tools, and we'll get this knocked out tonight. It's really easy to do, and I'm literally so close to being done, but I just can't get these races to go in, and you need wheel bearings so your wheels, you can drive and do things like that. So, we're calling it up as a pause for now, and we'll get back to this tonight. Okay, so many hours have gone by, but I'm back home and I has this. This is a uh, bearing race and seal seat driver tool. That way I can actually get my races to go back in and we can finish this up. My car's been sitting like this for hours now. Let's get started. So how this works is you find the size that fits your race. You put it inside like that, you use this tool, you screw it in the top and then you hit it with a hammer. And then it goes in. Easy as that, you just hit it. All right, here's my setup. Got my little handle piece here. This is the size that fits perfectly inside uh, my race. It's inside there. Set it like that, hit it with a hammer, and it should go in, should. All right, had to smack it pretty hard, but if you look in there, right, sorry, the mic's in the way. Boom, race has been seated. Let's continue with this swap, please. All right, front, well, back and front races are in. We've got some new grease in there. Now we can go ahead and slide this on. All right, now that our rotor is on, and the next step is putting our new wheel bearing here in first, so wheel bearing first, and then we have this flat plate here that goes next, then we have the nut that goes after that, then we have this little cap thing that goes after that, and then we have the cotter pin that goes through the center, and then our cap, and then this side is done. Well, I'm gonna put the copper on, but then at least this center section will be done. When you put grease on your wheel bearings, I was always taught, I kind of hold it on my hand, I put a whole bunch of grease around it and kind of squish it through. You want to pack the wheel bearing, which means get grease in every little spot you can and completely fill it out. So we're gonna do that. Bearing has been packed and it's all in there. Uh, this little wash here will only go on one way. There's a little notch right there you can see on the side. It'll only go on that way so you can't possibly mess that up unless you just beat it with a hammer, but it only goes on one direction. Our nut is on. When you tighten this down, I always do it a little bit past snug, enough that this still spins, but it's not like it's not locked up, but it's not loose. So a little bit past snug. Um, that's all what I've always used. No had a problem. So this, aside from our little cap and our cotter pin, is done. I'm gonna get the brake pads put in the caliper, and then we're just about there. All right. So a few people have asked me if the oh somebody was concerned if the e-brake off of the drum e-brakes would still work the cable was still match up with the caliper ones they're a little bit longer the drum ones are longer i think but i think i may have made a solution that this stock one will work i think so if you look here normally this is the e-brake off of the the jetta the drum brakes normally there's a long um coiled up spring around this i cut all that off so now this will sit in the back piece on the back of the caliper here for the normal e-brake, and I think it's actually gonna work. I don't know for sure, I mean, I can always leave the car in gear, but I think it'll work, so we're gonna give that a shot. If not, I might have to build something right here that can hold it a little tighter, because this one doesn't fit in as snug, but at least it'll be there and it might work, I don't know. 
All right, and just like that, we have a fully complete side. Rotor, caliper, brake pads are in there, wheel bearings are in. The only thing, if you look down here, maneuver, okay, so, this is the e-brake here. Someone said it was too long, but it's actually, it has to go up to that little hook there. It's actually about two inches too short to actually latch into there, so I have to figure out something to do with this. I probably just loosen the e-brake up there instead of giving me some, uh, some more cable and then hook it in, but that's a pain in the butt because I have to pull out my carpet, I think. Well, I have to pull out like, the center console, and I don't really feel like doing that right now, so as of right now, this, there's no e-brake, so we'll leave it in gear. Um, I guess I could probably like maybe like, zip tie to this side to that and have it pull down, but that might be kind of ghetto. But as of right now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not kind of over this right now. It's kind of irritating me because the piston and the caliper didn't want to compress, but I finally got it. Um, but for now, I'll put the car in gear. But one side is officially done. Well, one side's done. That honestly took way too long. Now granted, I did leave in the middle a little bit to go work, but like, that took too long. But one side is done. Does it work? Don't know. Do I have an e-brake? Not at the moment, but it's there and it spins like this and nothing's falling off. So I mean, mostly good job. I don't know if it works or not, but we'll find out later on. I'll probably finish up the other side tomorrow after work, but I won't, I might film that. I don't know. I know I don't vlog on Wednesdays, but maybe we'll change it up a little bit. Um, this wasn't too bad to do once I worked on little kinks here and there. Um, getting the piston to compress, for whatever reason, it, it took so much. And I pulled the little, I don't know, back screw off to let the brake fluid come out. It just didn't want to compress. But then finally, I hit it hard enough and all the, like, the brake fluid went flying out of it. And then I think it was just stuck a little bit. But finally, so they're both broke free. Um, so tomorrow shouldn't take near as long. So I, I've done it already. And I know what I'm doing at this point. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I made a giant mess. I have a lot to clean up. The car is a full color. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of tired. It's like 11.15. This took too long. This was dumb. And honestly, I did literally all that for brakes you can't even see. Because my Zobbers, you can't really see through them. So I mean, not like you're going to see my cool fancy disc brakes in the rear. Ah, <sighs> the things we do for whatever reason. I th it was a good idea at the time. And I'm, I'm pleased with it. It looks pretty nice when you get the wheels off and whatnot. So tomorrow I'll start off making the e-brake work on both sides and getting the other side swapped out. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't get to wash my car. It's still filthy. We're going to end the video here because I'm tired and exhausted and this car frustrated me. Oh, and the, the race pounder in tool thing about that I didn't also have. That also made me set me back on time quite a bit, but it is what it is. One side is done. If you enjoyed this video, hit thumbs up. If you are new, please subscribe. If you learn maybe mildly anything, awesome. I'm not, I'm no mechanic. I, I can mildly do things for the most part. I don't know. Somehow this car is together and I don't know how. And I've done like 90% of the work on this car and somehow it hasn't fallen apart yet. So that's not too bad. Okay, I'm done talking. Bye.